Shalom, shalom. Hey, uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to the Most High by the way of His Son, who's an instrument of salvation for the nation, right? Who's our high mediator, who's our king, who's our high priest, who, um, you know, is our instrument of salvation. He is sent just like Moses was sent to save the people. But what did Moses say? Moses said in the book of Deuteronomy that these are the these are the children of God who are saved by their God. He didn't say saved by Moses. He said saved by their God. So that's why I say or we say instrument of salvation, because he was just a vessel used right to save God's people because the most high God. What he sits on the throne. He ain't got to move. He tells people. Right. He sends people to do his will. Christ, the Hamashiach, the Hamashiach, right, or Hamashiach, he also tells us it's not of me that calleth, right, but him that draweth near. So the Most High God got to draw the people near to this live. He got to draw the people near when we go to the street. He got to draw the people near. We don't do nothing. We just vessels, right, that he's using. But to get into this today, right, um, what we're going to do is, you're going to scribe vanity. We're moved far from the vanity <laughs> and lies. But, uh, but nah, uh, what we're going to talk about today is um, sin is selfish, right? Sin is selfish. We're going to go through a few scenarios that's going on in the world today that um, proves that sin, the act of sin is selfish. All right. Can you turn it down some? It's like you. All right. So first, let's go to Jeremiah 31 and 22. All right, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, starting at verse number 22. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth, a woman shall compass a man. Right, read that last part again. A woman shall compass a man. Right, so why? Is, so when it says compass a man, uh, you, could say, you could say that um, it's surrounding a man, or you could say it's surpassing a man, right? But why would the Most High God prophesy and say that they're surpassing a man moving forward being lifted up over the man right it's a new thing in the earth he says so this is new and that's crazy because he said ain't nothing new under the sun but he said there's a new thing in the earth right but if we make sense of that we could we could say um this was new back then too in egypt when they worshiped the women over the man or when even um in the in roman culture or greek culture right they had um most of their female goddesses in the Bible, it's just going to be referred to Ashtoreth, right? But that's a, a multiple of deities that they worship that were female entities, right? Because they worship the women. So nowadays, it's a new thing in the earth. The, even though this book was written thousands of years ago, it's a new thing in the earth, right? We went from women having to fight for their freedom and fight for a right to vote and fight for a voice. We went from that to what? To women now ruling the world. Who runs the world? Girls. What's what's on a if I ask men today, what's undefeated? They're going to give me the same answer. Right. But it's not it's not undefeated. You just got to do something about it. And with that being said, you know, came and said Kevin Samuels died and, you know, everybody's been talking about it. Um, so I guess we'll say our piece. But, you know, Kevin Samuels died. And um, am I saying the brother is righteous? No, not at all. I'm not saying the brother is righteous at all. Right. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the brother is righteous uh, because um, he did say something like um, we got to advocate for the homosexual men because these women aren't worth anything. Right. So I got to draw the line right there and just tell you all straight up. I'm not supporting or justifying the righteous over means justifying the wicked over the righteous. Right. But what Kevin Samuels was doing was reestablishing order right in the world. Not just for men, but for black men, right? So-called black men, because we've taken the back seat. So read that one more time. The book of Jeremiah 31 and 22 again. I'm, How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth, a woman shall compass a man. Right, so he says that they're backsliding even though women are being pushed forth, right? So it's, so it's kind of like a, so is that a... Is that a double entendre, they might say? I don't know. So, you know, with that being said, Salakia. But with that being said, you know, that's that's 
being selfish. The women nowadays are selfish beings. For an example, Salakia. Yeah. Uh, but uh, for an example, right? How the women today are selfish beings. Um, me and my rib was watching a, a Netflix show called uh, Madam C.J. Walker. Right. And in Madam C.J. Walker, if you don't know about the story or whatever, you could buy her products today in Walmart. Right. She 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 sold miracle hair grow. Right. And so Madam C.J. Walker surpassed her husband. Right. At one point, her husband was, you know, ruling the house and, and she loved her husband because her husband loved her and accepted her how she was. And her husband was happy with her. Right. Even though they weren't living as millionaires or anything like that. But what happened was she got that bright idea and because that spirit was in the earth to surpass a woman right it caught fire on her and she was the first not only black but the first woman self-made millionaire in the united states but the example is when you watch that docu-series or whatever on netflix of her life right she went up against um booker t washington right and, and told booker t washington uh, why won't you let me speak or why won't you let me bring this out? Right. This will help the black community. And Booker T. Washington said, he said, I can't let you do that because if you do that, the woman will surpass the man. That's what he said in the show. Right. And he had good means to say that because now we live in a world where there are women do surpass our men. They do call the shots. They do act like men. Right. They do. They all our, our women are. That's how you know it's sin because it's selfish. That's why we titled it sin is selfish, right? Our women want to make decisions. They want to say uh, what goes and what doesn't go. They want to say when, we sh when we're going to move and when we're not going to move. They want to say what we're going to eat and what we're not going to eat. They want to say what's going to happen for our baby and what's not going to happen for our baby. They want to say all these. They want to say where we're going to congregate and where we're not going to congregate, right? Our women call the shots because they've surpassed men like Jeremiah just said, right? So that's one way of how sin is selfish in the world today, right? Let me make sure. Okay, another point, right? Our women, they love being in that power seat so much. And this is not going to be a whole thing about women. I got other bullet points too. This is just the first uh, point about how sin is selfish, right? But our women, what else do they do? They love to back up gay men. They love to back up gay men. Why? To keep... To keep their seat at the top. The more gay men we have, the more reason for women to be dominant. The more re reason for women to control, right? So that's why they'll praise gay men and stand up for them and march in the streets, right? But they won't stand up for masculine men. They won't stand up for the men that's actually using their voice, all right? And that's selfish, right? That's a selfish motive. Um... So check this out. Let's go to Leviticus 20 and 13. Con. Heading to the book of Leviticus. So I can put a tab in that. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 20. And we're going to go to, you said verse number 13. Con. Con. Leviticus 20 and 13. Bear with me. And it reads, If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with the woman, both of them have committed an abomination they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Right. Read that last part, please. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So this is talking about homosexuals, right? This is talking about laying with mankind and mankind or womankind and womankind. This is talking about homosexuals. And it says they should surely be put to death. Right. Um, so we're going to we're going to go throughout some examples of homosexual homosexuality. Right. And prove that it's a selfish desire, right? Because when we come into this truth or when we come into the knowledge of the truth, we know what's right and we know what's wrong, right? Um, you, a lot of them might feel like they're born that way. They might feel like they're born to like the same sex. They're attracted to the same sex. A lot of us, right, might think that we were born with the taste for alcohol. We were born right? To be heartbreakers, right? You, you have a baby straight out the womb. You, a lot of people say, oh, that baby's so cute. He's going to be a heartbreaker. She's going to be a heartbreaker. Next thing you know, they're playing a bunch of men, playing a bunch of women, right? So you might think you're born to be something. You might think you're born to be, um, born, uh, to be, um, 
what what's something else? Uh, born to be, um, <laughs> I don't know, a, a stealer, a pedophile, or whatever. Right. But you gotta change your ways. If not, that's selfish. You want to do what you want to do, right? So homosexuality, you you're no different. You're called when you're called to the truth. You're called to deny your flesh, deny yourself, even if you feel like you were born that way, because we're born into what? We're born into sin, right? You got to deny that, come out of that, and then convert. That's why 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 says, all you guys were, 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 says, all you guys were these things, but now you guys have converted, right? So if you don't convert, that's selfish. also. Speak up. Salakia also, that's another reason why we are to get born again. We wouldn't have to get born again if the first time we was born, we was born pure and perfect. Right. So, hey, look, we're already born into sin, born into this clay body to and we and we commit sin. Like the brother just said, we got to be born again. New creations, new creatures. That's what a creature is, is a creation. You got to be a new creation. Right. A lot of them will say, well, you guys are just homophobes. Right. And I and me and my rib was watching a, a video and the brother was saying, well, yeah, we are homophobes and God's a homophobe too. the most high God of the Bible is a homophobe. That's why I had the brother read that last part again, saying that they shall surely be put to death. Right. Why would they be put to death? Because the most high God is scared of what they might do if they if they live, they might infect the rest of the congregation. They might infect the rest of the world. And what happens? What happens when that happens? Right. Recreation, procreation stops. The extinct of mankind stop. It, it, it. I mean, it doesn't stop, but the extinct of mankind comes, right? And that is selfish because you think the way you think. Now everybody else has to accept the way you think and think the way you think. So that's why they push it in the schools. That's why they do all that, right? But guess what? That's selfish. Sin is selfish. You got something? No, go ahead. Uh. Romans 1 and 25. It's the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse number 25. And it reads right here. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever? Right. Hey. So off bat, who turned the truth of God into a lie? Right. Who said that the, the woman should be above the man? Who said that you can sleep with whoever you want to sleep with? Who said that you could um, be a different gender? Right. Um. Salakia. Who said you could be a different gender? You you become a different gender. What happens? Right. That's a lie because you wasn't born that way. All right. You was not born that way. So it's a lie. It's not the truth. All right. So go to Revelation 11 and 8. Hold that real quick. Go to Revelation 11 and 8. Just the book of Revelation chapter 11 and you said verse number 8. Right. And then I'm going to play this little clip for y'all. Con. So let me get this Revelation 11. Bear with me. Salakia. Hey, this clip gonna is going to piss some of us off. Right. It kind of pissed me and my rib off last night. Right. Revelation 11, 8. And it says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. But spiritually is called what? Sodom and Egypt. Right. So everybody knows about Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. And the five cities that surrounded that place. They were wicked. They was all different. You think somebody it's just new. It's new technology that people are changing their sex and that you can't tell who's a man and who's a who's a, a woman. You think that's new? No. These people were so wicked back then, probably more wicked than what we're seeing in California, that the Most High God had to rain fire, rain fire down. Right. So check this clip out real quick. This is an example of who changed the truth into a lie. Right. And they're pushing it on our kids who changed the truth into a lie. And just look how wicked these people look. Right. But who changed the truth into a lie? They dress in costume. Some even push pieces of metal through their faces in order to look fierce. Look at them in their war paint. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name's Alice and I'm a preschool teacher. Recently we started wearing pronoun pins and the kids get to pick a new pronoun pin every... We have some that pick like she, her every single day and we have some that change it up. So I'm a non-binary preschool teacher and my kids know I'm non-binary. Um, they know I'm not a girl or a boy. I use they, them pronouns in the classroom. We work on it. Not all the kids get it. That's okay. And I go by Mix Gray in the classroom, not Miss or Mr. Man, y'all thought me uh, teaching the children of whom me being Polly was crazy. But not only that, but they also know that I'm gender fluid. I'm going to give you my explanation about what it means to be transgender as well. 
So when babies are born, the doctor looks at them and they make a guess about whether the baby is a boy or a girl. Kids as young as three and four are actually aware of their gender identity, even if they don't have the language for it. Say that pre-K through third grade are not ready for such topics is actually internalized homophobia and transphobia. Margaret Mead wrote about people like this. So, you know, I try to keep up with the news, but um, when that was uploaded from Fox News last night, I said, man, the world is crazy. We can't even allow our kids to go to school no more because the very people that's supposed to be handling them for eight hours plus a day are feeding this garbage to them. The very people that we trust our kids to just be with for hours. You know, it only takes about three hours maybe to condition somebody over and over, but we multiple eight hours a day. We condition our kids with this, this mess and the school systems are hiring these people. They won't. Hey, look, they won't hire. They won't hire people with common sense, but they'll hire these people. All you got to do, you don't even have to have a certification no more. They'll give you some time to get your certification and just hire crazy people like this. And tell you that, hey, look, you don't have to be something. You don't have to be a man. You don't have to be a girl. You don't have to be a boy. They'll tell you that. So read that from the top. Revelation 11 and 8 from the top. Hey, and Salakia 2, that's how sin is selfish. Sin is selfish because just because they think it, they think everybody else has to think like them. They got to push that on our people. They got to push that on our kids just because they feel that way. But that's selfish. What about those people's parents and how those people's parents feel about their kid? What about what they want to teach to their kid? Right? What about how that kid feels about their parents? All right, read that. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Right. So, oh, so like I meant uh, uh, Romans 1 and 25. Oh, Romans 1 and 25 from the top again. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator? Right. So they, they serve in the creature more than the creator, man. They don't care what the most high God say. They don't care what this Bible say. They are serving each other. They, what is a creature? It's a creation. And we know it was created by Hamashiach. We know it was created by Christ. He was the firstborn of every creature. And then he out of him created everything else. So guess what? We're worshiping creatures or creations because we, we, we value the opinion of something that we can feel and touch. Something we can sympathize and empathize with. But we don't value the opinion of, you know what I'm saying, the most high God. Right? We're not on his level. But keep reading. Verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. Right. So that's why we see this stuff on the news. That's why uh, he's allowing our children to be influenced. That's why um, everything is going on. Because, and look, he saw that we, the children of Israel, he saw that we was dabbling into that. So guess what? He said, you know what? I'm going to make it to where it's impossible to get away from. Right. Keep reading a little bit more. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Con, the brother said the carpenter, Christ, right? He's a carpenter. Guess what the carpenter do? He create. So how can I make a building? How can I create a chair? Right. And that chair tells me I want to be a TV. How does how does that work? That doesn't work. That doesn't make sense. Right. So we can't I can't worship the chair and, and, and break it down and make it into a TV stand just because it wants to be a TV stand. The carpenter made it a chair. Right. Yeah, the brother said that the next generation is the target. We're the generation that they're trying to target to, to be acceptance into integration. And the next generation is the target to, you know what I'm saying, get them to totally conform. Con, that's why um, Isaiah 58 tells us what? Isaiah 58 tell us that we're the repairs of the breach, restore of the path, right? We're ripping up um, generation generational foundations, right? To stop that, to put everything back in order, right? Let's go to um, another way that sin is selfish. Because all of that is selfish, right? You care about your opinion and how you view the earth, but not how the most high or other people view the earth, right? So uh, let's go to uh, Leviticus 19 and 26. It's Leviticus 19 and 26. Leviticus 19 and 26. Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, 
Neither shall you use enchantment nor right. observe. So time. right there, you know, we see that the the media is pushing what drinking blood and rituals and all this other crap. We see we see uh, Megan Fox and M M MJ um, MGK openly in interviews saying they drink each other's blood and do a ritual and they they kind of laugh it off, right? We see openly. Um, Salakia, uh, keep reading that. Keep reading that. Read that from the top. Ver Leviticus 19 and 26 from the top. You should not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment nor observe time. Right. So neither shall you use enchantment or observe time. I wanted to finish it out because I want what I was going to say encompass the whole thing. Right. Because we see um, people like like I just said with MGK and Megan Fox. Right. Drinking each other's blood. That's worse than eating something with it. But you drinking each other's blood. But they're pushing that so it can be normal. So people can. Uh, be influenced by these characters because that's the only reason why people are famous man that's the only reason why people are allowed to be famous is so what so that they can influence so that they can condition people to think something is normal that's absurd right also the enchantments right there there was a video of kim k saying she received a piece of um whose hair was that um madonna, madonna. uh kim k received a piece of madonna's hair right and as a gift, and she said, oh, I'm going I'm to channel her, right? She's doing witchcraft. And a lot of our people is doing witchcraft and tarot cards. They're doing a lot of stuff. That's why that other, um, it was another meme that went around and said, hey, look, y'all are selfish. Y'all just want, y'all miracle now. Was it Madonna or Marilyn Monroe? It was Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Marilyn Monroe, right? So, you know, y'all, people that's into enchantments, praising their ancestors, into manifestation. Guess what? Y'all, y'all want y'all's. Y'all want y'all's blessing right now. Y'all want y'all's miracle right now. Y'all want what y'all want to happen right now. Right? It's not about what's good for you or what's bad for you. Y'all just want what y'all want. That's selfish. Right? When you calling on spirits, familiar spirits, when you when you using tarot cards, when you get in palm readings, all of that is selfish. That's how you know it's sin. It says don't a hey, none of these enchantments. We're not supposed to do none of that stuff. Right? Because all of that is going to lead you astray. It's going to make you a lost sheep. All of that is selfish. All of that is a desire of your flesh. It's a desire of what you want. Because guess what? If the Most High God said, hey, look, um, I see, I I'm going to give you some blessings, but I, I want you to go through all of this first, right? So you'll understand the blessing. But you say, no, I want my blessing right now. And you go talk to some sorcerer or whatever. Guess what? You know what I'm saying? All of that was for nothing. Even with um, sickness and health, right? A lot of us was super scared. Guess what? If the Most High God wants says your time is up and you're going to get sick and die, guess what? Your time is up. You're going to get sick and die. But if the Most High God want to keep you, he's going to keep you. So what do you need to go to a doctor or go to um, go to a medical um, practitioner, somebody that practices medicine, right, to inject something in you, right? So you can get a quick fix. So you can get some quick safety, right? It's all selfish. You think about yourself. You're not thinking about the Most High God. Or his people, right? But um, with that, this was a short. Can I say something? Real quick? Con, you got something? Yeah, because it's right on topic, right? So this was a few months back. We were we were out preaching on this uh, on Fort Valley State, and uh, we ran into this homosexual girl. And um, so long story short, she was talking about how it's hate, it's hate speech when you when you speak speak against the LGBT community, right? And I told her, I said, well, if you consider what we're doing, hate. You know, the LGBTQ, they're into a lot of hate, too. And she kind of looked at me kind of puzzled, right? And I explained to her, like, I asked her, I said, do you want a family? She said, yeah. But if you marry a woman, I said, how are you going to obtain that family? Can you have a family, still have a woman, and, 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 and be two women? She was like, of course. You can adopt. You can get surrogates, all of that. I said, but that's the hate that you're showing towards that kid. Because you're going to adopt it uh, more nine times out of ten. You're going to adopt a baby. You're going to get a surrogate, get a baby. You're going to grow them up with two moms and... Let it be a boy. He has never. He never gets the chance to say, "Oh, or or he's gonna always have the in the back of his head." Man, I wish I had a father to go uh, throw the ball with out in the front yard. You know what I'm saying? He's never gonna get that chance because you robbed that from him because your selfishness wanted a family uh, of of your choice, right? Instead of letting God build the family that He wanted, right? And so you're you're projecting that hate on that kid because that kid will never have a have a father no matter how much you try to be a boy no matter how much you try to be a man he'll never have a father and that's projecting that hate onto your on, on these innocent kids 
And that piggybacks right back into the, the big thing that's going on right now, which is abortions, right? We see all these uh, situations about whether we should have abortions or not. Well, you know, Hebrew Israelites, we're all for not having abortions, right? No matter what it is. Oh, you got a lot of sticky situations out there. Um, I believe my cousin even brought up the fact that um, she was uh, uh, harassed or sexually harassed and whatnot. And people are talking about, you You telling me you got to have the, these babies by these, pred these predators and, and all of this, right? As And this is going to sound very controversial, right? Right? But we should... Say that, say God created a, a, a new life within you, right? Instead of look, and it's, it's tailored to the video because it's saying sin, sin is selfish, right? You're, you're, you're worshiping the fact that you want your inner peace so bad that you would kill this baby that's within inside you, right? Uh, knowing that the baby didn't do anything to you. So you're worship, you're idolizing that, that, that trauma that you're not trying to have. Right. Killing. So you killed a baby when the baby had nothing to do with it. Right. When there's there's several other things where you can have a baby and put it up for adoption. You know what I'm saying? Or that baby can come and change your life. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys watch the shy, but the same thing happened in the shy where what happened? Uh, oh, oh, girl got uh, got raped by her kidnapper, ended up pregnant. She thought about aborting it. She didn't abort it. It happened to be the best thing that ever happened to her life. Right. And a lot of us are so scared and so selfish that we take it upon ourselves to say, hey, look, I'm going to abort this thing. Right. Because I don't I can't even imagine living with the trauma of having my predators uh, child. Right. It's not up for us to figure out what's what God has planned for us. It's for us to carry it out, whatever he has plans for us. If I'm born a man, it's for me to carry out that I'm a man. If I'm a woman, it's for me to carry out that I'm a woman. Right? Yeah, right? Sin is selfish. Con. And I was gonna say, did any y'all, any y'all plan on watching that that Marvel movie, that new Marvel Doctor Strange? I do. Movie? You plan on watching it? Yeah. I ain't gonna spoil it then. I mean, you can. I'm gonna hold my. Nah, I'm gonna hold my peace. I'm gonna hold my peace. You are gonna let you watch it? But I'm gonna just say that there's a lot of selfishness within that movie itself that goes along with this lesson. Right. And this is Proverbs twenty and twenty four. It says, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? So everything that happens in our life, it's not of our will, right? It's of the Most High God. The Most High God ordered your steps. It says man directs his, uh, his steps, but the Most High God directs our paths, right? So whatever we encounter, whatever happens to us, right? Didn't Job tell his wife um, in, um, I think it was Job 2 and 10. Job told his wife. Right, um, it's like you. Let's just go to it. Job chapter two and verse ten says, "It says, but he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? Right. So you're gonna get evil, and you're gonna get good from God in this life." Even our forefather, Jacob, when he was on his deathbed, right, uh, and Pharaoh asked him, uh, how, how, how did you make it this far? How was your life? He said, look, my life was long and but was short and terrible, right? So guess what? We're going to live short and evil, Salakia. But we're going to live through good and we're going to live through evil. But you, the, your job is to endure to the end. Your job is to not give up. Your job is to um, not commit suicide, Right? Because a lot of times we do stuff thinking that it's going to help us to live physically, but really it's killing us um, spiritually. And that's because we're selfish. That's because sin, sin is selfish. All the, every sin is selfish because you don't have to do it. He said his commandments are not grievous. I got another precept also for, from our uh, forefather Jacob, right? Um, when, when Rachel said, uh, give me children or else I die. Verse number two, Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, am I in God's stead who has withheld from the fruit of the womb? Pretty much saying, hey, look, am I God? I'm, it's not me who's putting this in, uh, this fruit in you. It's the most high God. So you get mad at me for no reason. Right. It's the most high's will, not mine. Right. So even with, um, you know what I'm saying, childhood traumas or things that happen in our life that make us frustrated, we got to understand it's the most high God that's doing that. He's putting that evil in our life. He's sending those evil spirits to see how we're going to weather through the storm. But it's for us to do like um, 2 Peter 1 and 10, right? We have to make our calling and our election sure, right? By doing all these things, right? 
that's throughout this whole Bible. So it's it's for us to not be selfish and it's for us to always think of the most high God. It says in Sirach 2, I think every Israelite, that's every Israelite's favorite verse. It's Sirach 2. When you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for temptation. But a lot of us don't take that in. We don't take the fact that we're going to be tempted, right, to go back into the world. We don't take the fact that we want, we, we're going to be tempted to um, be hot girls and city boys. We don't take the fact that, you know what I'm saying, that we might not get what we want. We might not get that husband. We might not get that wife. We might not get that job. We might not get that, you know, them kids. You know, you might be barren. Or you might get a kid earlier than what you wanted. Or you might get a kid earlier than what you wanted from a man that you didn't want to have it by. Right? But guess what? The most high God sent that evil into your life. I think that's um Deuteronomy 30, ain't it? Or 32. Where he says, I set before thee good and evil, right? Uh, 32 and 39. Come I, even I, am he, and there is no good within me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Right? So he wounds you. Sometimes he gives you a gut check in this life. He might give you some stripes, some some wounds, right? But he has the power to heal too, right? Even um, Deuteronomy 30 at the top, it says what? It shall come to pass when all these things come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, the blessing and the curse. If you're living your life and you can't see the curses, right? Is the most high really dealing with you? Because he said the blessing and the curse got to come to pass before he come back, right? So guess what? We got to deal with what's on our plate. And we got to pray that the Most High God gives us food convenient for us. We, For example, um, kind of like this. For I'll use the sister for an example, right? She don't like lamb, right? So if, if the Most High God gave her a bunch of lamb and it's going to make her throw up, right? Uh, but, you know, shout out to the sister. She do eat it for the holy days, you know? But if, 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 if somebody gave her a bunch of lamb and she just going to throw it up, right? That's not convenient food for her. It's not going to nourish her. She needs food that she can digest, that she can keep down. All right. So feed me with food that's convenient for me. Maybe that job is not convenient for me. Maybe that car is not convenient for me. Maybe that wife is not convenient for me. Maybe having kids is not convenient for me. Right. Maybe, you know, it's so many things that might not be convenient for me, but only the most high God can see that. Right. But he got the power to heal as well. The most high God can can heal you and say, guess what? I didn't give you this because I wanted you to have that. I didn't, but we got to do the first part and not be selfish, not be selfish because sin is selfish, right? You got to give up yourself. You got to deny your flesh when your flesh is telling you that, you know, I don't see why I can't do this, right? I always tell people it's a difference between um, knowing of the truth and being in the truth. And the, the key factor is this right here. All things are lawful, but all things aren't expedient. When you can meet a sister, when you can meet a brother that understands the difference between I shouldn't do that even though I can. That's when you met a powerful brother or sister. That's when you met a leader. That's when you met somebody who's truly changed and that's not selfish, right? I could have multiple wives, but I I know that it's probably not expedient. I'm weighing out my options. I I I could um I could leave this relationship or put her away, but it's not really convenient for my kids. I could you know, there's so many other, there's so many things that, you know what I'm saying, we could do, but aren't expedient, right? But we got to pay attention to that and not be selfish. Okay. You had, y'all had anything? I had one more thing. Like the brother was saying, you know what I'm saying? And that all comes with discernment, right? We all have to have that discernment to know if something is of God and if it's not, right? So this is the book of Acts chapter five and verse 39. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, Come. right? And that's powerful, right? Because if, if God says something's going to happen, if God created something to be uh, something, right, that's what it is. And if you keep reading the verse, he's going to let you know what a lot of us in this world, a lot of us in society are, right? If it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Reading on, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. And that's what a lot of people are doing right now. They're fighting against God. You're not fight. You're not. A lot of people think they're doing the right thing, too, when they please themselves, right? Because sin is selfish, right? We make these selfish decisions. We think we're pleasing ourselves. But no, you're fighting against God. That's what you're doing. Con, and this is what people say, right? This is an example right here in Numbers 11, verse 11. This is Moses now. People would think Moses is strong and mighty. But if you think about Moses' life, Moses was really, um, he really complained a lot. 
well, I can't speak, so he got he to gotta get his brother. Well, I can't do this by myself, right? So he had to send multiple elders, right? But listen to the words of Moses, because this is, this is how most of us sound in our day-to-day -day lives, right? But Moses had a, he had a more important task than we, than we do, you know what I'm saying? So check this out, Numbers 11 and 11. And Moses said unto the Lord, this is him talking to the Lord. Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? A lot of us say that same thing. Why did you do this to me? Why did you let this happen? Why is this that the, the way it is? Why couldn't this, why couldn't I be in this position, right? Why have thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight? The most I got is split in the Red Sea. He's saving these, he's sending all these plagues. He's using Moses' staff to turn into a snake. And the most, and, and Moses had the nerve to tell God, you don't deal, you're not dealing with me. Why you don't like me? Why you, why did you leave me? Right? He said, I have not found favor in thy sight that thou layest the burden of all these people upon me. So Moses said, hey, look, this burden is too heavy for me. So skipping down, it says, um, verse 14, it says, I am not able to bear all these people alone because it is too heavy for me. Right? So the most like God said, he's going to give us a way of escape so that we'd be able to bear it. Doesn't mean that he won't give us more than we could bear. He won't put more than we could chew on our plate. But guess what? He's going to give somebody else to, to get a fork and they're going to dig in with you. You know what I'm saying? When you need it. But you got to know who to ask. You can't ask the you can't ask the lady in the in the weird tent. Right. That's going to read your palm. You can't ask the person at the vegan spot with the tarot cards. You can't ask your ancestors. You can't ask the universe. You have to ask the most high God if you want to be healed. You got to ask the most high God if you want a way of escape. Right. The most, so this is what Moses said too. Uh, 15, I'm going here because uh, we have a sister in the camp um, and uh, she she brought this to uh, to the attention of all of us in a group chat saying there's a spirit that's going around, right? It's witchcraft, go, witchcraft going, on, uh, going on right now, right? And it's, it's this same spirit right here that hit a lot of our forefathers, not just Moses that we're about to read about. This is Numbers 11 and 15. And if thou deal thus with me, right? Lord, if you deal with me, right? So this is what he said. If thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of, out of hand. If I have found favor in thy sight. He said, if I find favor in your sight, kill me. Take me out of this life, right? It says, and let me not see my wretchedness. A lot of us, we see, we see something that's not there. A lot of us being spiritually blind or, or thinking that we have discernment or thinking that we're prudent, we see destruction in our lives. We don't think that we can bear it. We don't think that we have the power or the fortitude to um, be successful according to the Most High God or to please the Most High God. A lot of us, we get down on ourselves. That's why the Most High God tells us to be courageous and strong. He tells us to be confident. He said that we're not going to be confounded, right? So guess what? A lot of us, we have that suicidal thought. Nowadays, recently, it's a lot of people committing suicide. A lot of brothers and sisters know people that commit suicide, right? That's a spirit that's latching on to people that's saying, hey, guess what? You can't endure to the end, right? And that spirit is a selfish spirit. We all know it's a selfish spirit because guess what? Suicide affects a nation. It doesn't just affect that one person. It's, it's selfish. Sin is selfish. So if you have a question in your mind, right? Ask the Most High. Read the, read the story and see if the Most High God took Moses out. No, he didn't. He left him and he gave him help because Moses asked at the mouth of the Most High God. Right. I'm going to go right here real quick before I end it. Um, this is Isaiah chapter 30. It says. Um, Isaiah 30 and two that Salakia, Isaiah 30 and one. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. So because the most high because Moses took counsel of the most high God, guess what? He was able to get that way of escape. But a lot of us, we don't take counsel of the Most High God. We get counsel from the government. We get counsel from our teachers. That's why all of our kids are being influenced. We get counsel from our girlfriends, our, our, our men, our, our homeboy, from Twitter. We get counsel from Instagram. We get counsel from YouTube. But we don't get counsel from the Most High God in these scripts. Romans 15, 4 said they was written for our learning, right? It says that, that, that cover with the covering, right? You might cover up for the time being, make you feel good. Got you a new jacket, right? It says, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. That's selfish. You want to cover up with your own covering, right? Just like uh, in the garden, right? In the garden of Eden, what happened? 
at Adam and Eve, they put on their own covering with the leaves. Right? If they would have just took counsel of the most high God, the most high God would have clothed them with that skin that, that he gave them eventually. They would have had that skin. What's that skin? That 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 ram skin, that goat skin, which is essentially a foretelling of Christ coming to clothe us in our nakedness our and our sin. Right? But with that, I'm going to say Shalom, man. I hope everybody has a good Sabbath day. What did the brother say? It says selfishness also tied with short-sightedness. Short Con. Hebrews 11 and 13. That is our faith to see beyond what we are living through but the end. Con. You know what I'm saying? Faith is what? The evidence of things unseen. We got to have faith in these last days and not be selfish. So any brothers got any clothing, closing statements? No. Nah. With that, we're going to say Shalom. Shalom. Hope y'all had a good uh, Shabbat so far. Rest up. Peace to the nation.